So, do you know what Larry Page and uh, Sergey Gibrin, uh, the founders of Google, Jimmy Wales, the founder of Wikipedia, and uh, uh, Jeff Bezos, the uh, founder of Amazon, do have in common? Can you imagine that? Money, oh yes, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Not just the three of them. <laughs> but they have, uh, besides the money, also uh, one more thing. They all went to Montessori schools. This has become such a widespread phenomenon in the Silicon Valley that the Wall Street Journal titled the Montessori Mafia of course, with an ironic hint at the Italian origin of this method. But isn't it weird that the managers of the future studied with a hundred-year-old method? Because when you think of Maria Montessori, you think of something old-fashioned. The pre-Euro era, this is the Mille Lire, the Italians for, for sure remind them, well, but let's have a look at Maria Montessori's story. She was born in 1870 in Rome in an upper middle class family. At that time, opportunities for women are severely limited. A woman could not own a bank account, could not vote for sure, could not own a property, could, was not even allowed to public education. But Maria's mother really believed in her, in her child, and uh, her child had a huge passion for science. And so, Maria was the first woman who enrolled for the medicine faculty in Rome. And in 1894, she was the first Italian female physician. So, she's really a number one. But of course, males who were dominating uh, that area when she graduated, didn't really know what to do with this extraordinary, brilliant, but also very strong-willed woman. So they had an idea. They sent her to a psychiatric hospital where there was a lot of children, because they were the children of the patients of this hospital. Nobody was caring of these children. And they had been labeled like mentally retarded, because, of course, the environment was the one of a psychiatric hospital. And she was sent there. But what did she do, Maria? She started to understand that these people, these children, did not really need medicaments, any treatment. They needed education. But Maria was not a pedagogist. She was a doctor. And so what did she do? She started to use the scientific experimental method in children's education. So she started observing them, and she saw that these children used to learn with their senses by touching, playing, discovering the world in their own way. And so she started developing special games, sensory games, tactile games, experimental games, like wooden letters, for example. This is a game that is still used in Montessori schools to uh, learn math and geometry. This is a game used to learn the rhymes. For example, mug, bug, jug. The children don't learn to do rhyming sets by writing. They put rhyming objects in a row, so they train listening. This is a Montessori school. On the right, of course, <laughs> on the left, <laughs> a classic uh, classroom. You see, children are free to, to learn on the floor. They have lots of objects. Uh, the teacher, teacher is a facilitator. Teacher is not a lecturer. There is no classroom program. There is an individual program, and there aren't votes. Montessori opened in 1907 school in a slum in uh, Rome. And what happened? That mentally retarded children or poor children flourished in her learning environments. And they could even reach the primary school license. But at the time, the fascism was in Italy. And they were not so happy with Maria Montessori because they thought 
that she couldn't be a good uh, pedagogic person because she was not a mother. And so she was not really recognized as uh, she deserved to be. But her method was already spread out all over the world, and so she was invited to go to India, to Sri Lanka. She traveled all over Europe. And finally, a huge success in America, and that's why the Silicon Valley CEOs have all attended Montessori School. She also got a time cover. She was defined as the educational superwoman, but most important of that in America and in all of Europe, I know, especially in Holland, there are lots of Montessori School. But Montessori is much more than a method. It is a philosophy and a thought. It is having faith in children, because they are the best part of humanity. They are humanity in its purest expression. So learning to be first have to start in childhood. And as managers and as entrepreneurs, keep on thinking that there are still a child inside every one of us, and appeal to that child with a Montessori mind. Because in this way, we will grow a generation of collaborative workers, but more important than that, of enthusiastic and happy people.